Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you as we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time here at St. Elizabeth and Seton Parish. We especially welcome all of you with us online, and we invite you and those present to show where you're celebrating Mass this morning on Facebook. There seems to be no signal this morning. Our presider this morning is Father Paul Sparklin, our pastor, and he's assisted by Deacon Tim Michaels. Let's take this moment now to silence those cell phones and come to a quiet awareness of God's presence remembering our needs and the needs of our loved ones and to give thanks for so many blessings. Please stand with me now and acclaim our entrance antiphon. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. Good morning, everybody. 
Good morning to all of you who are watching us online. Dear sisters and brothers, as we gather as the family of God, let us call to mind our sins as we seek God's mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We glorify God as we say glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. You may be seated. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, given you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God beside me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the people with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church 
of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind <coughs> your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a faithful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Saturday in Assisi, Italy, the church celebrated the beatification of a young man named Carlo Ocutis. It might have gone unnoticed except for his compelling story. He was born in the UK and his parents moved for work by beginning in London and then Germany until they finally settled in the northern Italian city of Milan where Carlo was raised and attended school. He had a deep devotion to the Eucharist and began going to daily Mass not long after he made his first communion. He learned about the Eucharist and was fascinated by the legends of the Eucharistic miracles of the Middle Ages. He longed to travel to places like Orvieto, where in the 8th century the host turned to human flesh and bled right before people's very eyes. As a high school student, Carlo stood up for the rights and dignity of those who were disabled or different, and he protected and defended them from being bullied by classmates. While he was in high school, he was diagnosed with leukemia. And as he was going through his treatment to continue his fervor for the Eucharist, 
in 2005, he documented a history of Eucharistic miracles around the world, and then he cataloged them all onto a website that he created in the months before he died. By creating a whole database of all these Eucharistic miracles, he taught others about what helped him grow in his love and devotion for the Lord. His passion for computers was a gift, a talent that God gave him, and he in turn gave it back to God. Carlo was well aware that the whole apparatus of communications, advertising, and social media can be used to lull us, to make us addicted to consumerism, to seek sexual gratification, or get caught up in negativity instead of civility. Yet Carlo knew how to use technology to transmit the gospel, to teach about the Eucharist, to communicate values and beauty. He died in 2006 at age 15, and the cult of devotion around his story, around his life, grew rapidly. He once said during his illness, I am happy to die because I have lived my life without wasting a minute on those things which do not please God. I've been struck by Carlo's life. Talk about someone taking advantage of every moment and finding ways to do good in whatever limited circumstances he found himself. I'm sure he'll be deemed the patron of the internet and social media because of what he did, but I think he could be the patron of 2020, about how we make do within the confines of our limits and certainly during the pandemic. Whenever God calls us to some work, there's always a reason and a need. But sometimes we don't see the need. We only see our own limited perspective, and we manage to make excuses. Whenever God calls, he also bestows the capacity to answer that call. Recall in last week's gospel that those invited to the wedding banquet were given the wedding garment to wear, but one of the guests failed to make use of the gift that had been given him, and he was thrown out. Today, I encourage you to look at what God is doing for you, as God calls you always to follow more closely, to learn, to grow, to be led deeper into communion with him, to serve and to give of yourself to offer your life in whose image you and I have been created to God. During this crazy year we call 2020, it's tempting to want to hit the pause button and just about everything, right? But God is still with us, calling us. God needs us more than ever. The world longs and yearns to hear the gospel. People are in, are in need and the status quo certainly needs to be challenged. This weekend, our parish of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton is looking at our path forward, our annual stewardship appeal. You know, my favorite time of the year. <laughs> this is a moment for us to remember that despite what the government has deemed or what society has designated as essential businesses, the church is always essential for us. There's no holding us back. The work and ministries we do, the good news we proclaim, and the presence of Christ we bring to the world are essential. And we can't simply take a break from them because it's difficult, or we make excuses, or pause for some time later. Blessed Carlo Acutis made the most of his circumstances. With limited strength, he found a way to be a witness and to do something for the Lord, and he could do it from his laptop computer. How about that? What an example he is for us, especially during these challenging times, because we too have been led to see the opportunities to minister using technology here at Seton Parish. 
in our virtual participation of our daily and Sunday Masses, especially here at the 930 Mass. In faith formation, high school youth ministry and Bible study groups meeting online. Sister Maureen and our RCIA team are ready to assist those who are thinking about joining the Catholic Church. And our website and social media platforms provide meaningful content to help us grow in faith. I've asked the staff to explore how we can be a beacon to the larger community, to teach the faith, to proclaim the gospel, to invite others to meet and know Jesus with every tool we can use in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. Our path forward as a parish is to make the most of every situation, recognizing that God is in fact leading us on this path and providing what we need. For as Isaiah prophesied in our first reading today, I am the Lord, there is no other. It sometimes means discerning how to do more with less, how to do things differently as we've been doing this year while keeping a close eye on our budget and having the staff spend less so that I can pay their salaries and benefits as well as our bills. I know and firmly believe that God is with us. Our financial situation has been a challenge, but so many of you have stepped up during these past seven months in ways that I could not have dreamed, but God inspired you. These months, I have found such encouragement and dedication, and I am grateful. I give thanks to God for the privilege and for the opportunity to serve here at our wonderful parish. As we are on this path together as a parish, I need your help, your support, and your trust in God so that we can continue on this path of faith, worship, and witness. I realize that it's been a difficult year, and for some, the call to give more or do more with your time, your talents, and your treasure couldn't come at a worse time. Parents continue to navigate their child's schooling either online or in a hybrid model. I don't know how you do it, but I commend you for hanging in there and being patient with their teachers who are in the same boat with all of you. And as the holidays approach, I need to expand the number of volunteers who already function as ushers and Eucharistic ministers for our current mass schedule. Our elderly population who normally fulfill these ministries are still not comfortable attending mass in person during the pandemic. And so if you are able, please let me know and I will put you in touch with Heather Algier, our staff member, who will walk you through the process. And I really wanna thank those who are already serving currently in these liturgical ministries. I'm also grateful to those who are involved in our outreach to those in need in our community by giving of their time and talent with our food pantry operation. They thought outside of the box and then came up with a brilliant plan to distribute food while keeping their volunteers safe. And so please know that the staff and I are here to help you and your needs. Don't hesitate to ask. But I do ask you today to consider what you can do for the Lord. And if you are able to take another step, to take the next step to be a more regular giver, a more committed donor, perhaps through Give Central or our online giving platform, which means you can do your part even when you can't be with us here in person. Maybe to increase your regular giving to help us more in these difficult times. Those of you who are registered parishioners, including myself, should have now received a mailing from me with all the details about how you can do your part. I got this on Friday. We are together on this parish, in this, on this path. 
And so let's look to the example of blessed Carlo Acutis and take advantage of the opportunities we have before us to do what we can for the Lord, to do it together. The Lord needs us, our world needs us, and we need each other. And together, we can do great things here at Seton Parish. And I am grateful for what we have already done so far. May God bless you for your devotion, your faith, and your zeal for the Lord. We profess our faith as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things, things visible and invisible. and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now offer our prayers to the one in whose image we are made, and whose law is inscribed on our hearts. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may manifest each day the work of faith, the labor of love, and the endurance of hope that is ours as God's people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials and employees, that they may wisely use their offices to promote justice and the common good, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who serve in mission territories, that God will strengthen their spirits and help them to be effective witnesses to the gospel, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who respond to the Our Path Forward appeal by pledging their time, talent, and treasures, that the Lord may give them perseverance and reward their efforts with blessings, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for life, that the Holy Spirit will open all to a deeper recognition of the beauty and mystery of life in all its stages. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Leona Dickinson, who we remember especially at this Mass. For all who are seriously ill or hospitalized, especially Kay Whalen. Father Vince Cushing, Robert Harp, and those suffering from the coronavirus, that God will ease their pain, help them to receive life-enhancing treatment, restore them to their loved ones. For all who have recently died, including Elizabeth Ann Novotny, and those who had COVID-19, May they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, 
and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. God of all goodness, hear and answer the prayers of those you claim as your own. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in a paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth and are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. He then gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith, we proclaim at your death, O Lord, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Christ taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon.
Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Please be seated. Amen.
Here are today's announcements. Please participate in the Thanksgiving food drive if you can. In the first week, we, we received 26 bags. Let's meet our goal of 350 this year. Details and important dates are on the parish website. We would like to include art from the children and youth of our parish on the Christmas card again this year. The submission form is on the website and social media, or you can access it using the link in this week's flock note. Be on the lookout for the new Children's Liturgy of the Word video to be posted by Jennifer O'Leary on the parish Facebook page. We encourage you to sign up for next weekend's Masses through the parish website or Facebook page. The link is available after the 9.30 Mass each Sunday. If you come to Mass without signing up, we cannot guarantee you a seat. Poor box contributions this week will benefit Crofton Christian Caring Council. Thank you for your continued generosity toward the offertory. Your contributions make it possible for us to pay our bills. Please continue to send in your envelopes or sign up for online giving through Give Central. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. Again, our ushers will help us lead the church and pay attention to the blue lines for social distancing. We all leave through the central doors after the presider. <laughs> 